OK, so uh, uh, th thank you all for attending this webinar, which is for uh, NetSuite for Modern CA for embracing the future of finance. And um, uh, this hope this uh, webinar would be uh, interesting. Uh, just a quick uh, overview about us. So I am Vikram and uh, I'm looking at the, the business application practice at uh, Advaya. And with me, my co-presenter Sandeep has joined, who is a principal uh, consultant in Oracle NetSuite, and uh, he has a uh, rich ERP experience of many years uh, helping uh, large as well as small organizations uh, in different uh, countries. And he is leading the, the Oracle uh, practice. I am uh, leading uh, the business application practice in Advaya and um, working with many customers for business applications uh, implementation. So, so let's talk about uh, when we talk about uh, the, the the CFO's role is changing and about uh, I means how uh, we are talking taking the the finance in the future. So, uh, the role of finance is uh, changing due to uh, many things. Like one is the strategic con uh, context that. Uh, uh, CFOs are no longer uh, just focused on financial. It is more about uh, they are involved in the organizational strategy and they are uh, involved in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, working of many things like they are also acting sometimes in the shoes of uh, uh, CEO as well as CEO. And it's a mandate to be more influential. So more influential in terms of like how to uh, grow more revenue, getting more business. And th there are other things like uh, today every organization is a kind of a digital organization, so there is data everywhere. And how to to get the data, how to synthesize this data and turn uh, into uh, information. So so that is about uh, uh, the the role is changing. And secondly, there are two changes which are seeing that first is about leading the change in finance, how the finance uh, 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 a function is changing itself and second is leading the change in business because the business are become uh, disruptive become transformative and there are there are new business cases and scenarios are uh, appearing so so how to manage uh, these changes and that is about the 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 changing role of cfo so <clears throat> before 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 start with the this thing just a kind of an overview about our organization so uh, we Advaya are an uh, Oracle NetSuite partner as well as uh, uh, Microsoft uh, partners, and we are providing business applications and analyt analytic solutions uh, to our esteemed customers. And we are helping customers in four areas that is uh, about decision making, where it is more about uh, business data analytics and aggregating data, uh, creation of data infrastructure, and uh, reporting solutions. Uh, customer experience where it is more about uh, uh, touching all the points where uh, the organization is in, uh, interacting with the customers, whether it is CRM, CSM, uh, field services. Then uh, business productivity, that, that is about, all about, about business applications as well as uh, uh, project management services as well as team collaboration solution and uh, technology and innovation where it is more about uh, <coughs> using greatest and latest uh, technologies like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, as well as uh, automated uh, <coughs> things like robotic uh, <coughs> process automation and uh, all these things which are uh, used for uh, any kind of uh, applications or analytics. And <coughs> we are providing tailored digital transformation services which uh, starts from building information strategy, uh, then uh, uh, once the information is studied in place, we implement the applications that is the business process facilitation with business applications. So we implement uh, applications like Oracle NetSuite and then it's more about uh, creating insights from these applications in terms of uh, reporting and business insights. And once the insights in place, it is more about uh, making this more intelligent or action driven uh, uh, things. So it is more about uh, how to do process automation or creating automated workflows uh, so that actions are happen as uh, they are needed. So that is all about uh, uh, the overview of our organization.
So now let's talk about uh, the, the strategic context that is about uh, like how the things are changing. So uh, there is a technology disruption happening and the business are uh, changing uh, the way they, they are working. Uh, the new business models appearing uh, and you, you can see the curve. So uh, you can see that uh, like uh, when an enterprise start uh, some some kind of uh, pro process. So in like in five to ten years or uh, in 15 years, uh, it, it broadens and it, it includes other things like uh, computers, uh, regulators, and it's it's a kind of a uh, kind of a continuous, uh, you can say, uh, evolution of any kind of uh, when there when we are new business is starting, and it uh, it uh, contains like um, more competition as well as uh, more regulation and. There are also issues in about transparency and reporting. So there was a sur survey conducted uh, uh, by uh, Brainyard, uh, like what are the biggest challenges uh, CFOs are facing? So uh, uh, interestingly that uh, uh, most CFOs are having around 12 responsibilities. So that they are having around 11 to 15 uh, responsibility in the day to day operations. And the, the most biggest challenge was that they are juggling with too many responsibilities uh, about managing cash flows, managing fast growth. And uh, uh, so, so they are required to uh, be on the top of uh, different kind of things as well as uh, they have to manage the fast growth as well as looking at the technology which supported uh, fast growth organizations. So, when we see that uh, when we, they think about uh, implementing any kind of new technology, so what is the concern? The concern is about uh, uh, means that you can see in this uh, uh, visual that uh, uh, the most concern what about organization culture that is lack of expertise, uh, then about upfront uh, cost and return of investment, and the legacy system do not uh, support connectivity. So, so it is more about uh, like how to <coughs> change the, the overall system to, to implement something which uh, create a cult, kind of an organization culture as well as uh, uh, a kind of a modern, uh, uh, we can say infrastructure, which supports uh, the, the business cases which uh, CFOs has. So if it uh, again as a survey has conducted about the, the technology priorities of C, uh, CFOs, so these are the, the five priorities for next year, uh, two years and you can see that uh, these are in uh, uh, including like uh, like most of the like more than 50 percent have uh, thought about uh, better and faster reporting uh, that is more about uh, near real time or real time uh, closing uh, secondly is revenue growth then increased data visibility so that is more about uh, how to make better decisions based on the the availability of data and uh, Thirty-nine percent has also thought about implementing a new financial applications because uh, the the current application is not supporting uh, uh, the the needs of uh, <coughs> uh, needs of the, the the current scenario. So if you see that means uh, the agility is needed uh, for finance to evolve and that includes becoming cost efficient. Uh, uh, so it is like to, to report uh, uh, instead of reactive backward looking at rigid data, they need to be uh, proactive forward looking and uh, uh, get the flexible information. And instead of cost efficient, they want to be a kind of a strategic partner of business. So uh, from a kind of a um, <coughs> uh, handling the, the, the uh, just the financial functions, they are now at the forefront of uh, uh, any organization. And that is requires a kind of a evolution in the supporting systems. And when we talk about the supporting system, so the challenge uh, uh, with the, uh, the systems is that uh, uh, the currently there are disparate systems are being used uh, in organization and that uh, hinders uh, about implementing controls and compliance, uh, uh, creating accurate financial management reports as well as timely close and consolida consolidation because as soon you are able to close and consolidate, you are able to uh, understand and you are able to take the decisions. 
and these efficiency uh, takes uh, too long time and uh, the most uh, uh, and the fourth point is about the using of uh, uh, legacy outdated solutions which are uh, like hindering the, the today's business requirement so when we see about uh, what is leading the change in the management accounting services so uh, these are the uh, we can say the functions or the components of the management account system which is management and transformation uh, there is subject matter expertise required related to uh, reports tax mergers and acquisition uh, uh, then uh, there is management information related to financial process and analysis there are decision support and implementation system and performance management then there is a core function of uh, accounting operations account receivables ar payroll and all these things and accounting management information system so uh, the cfo has to manage all these functions as well as uh, other functions so when we see uh, the c the cfo's challenge so that is more about like they have to manage uh, change and drive growth uh, uh, about the holistic view of the business in real time and be able to tell the story and when we see how oracle lets you uh, uh, do this in in form of uh, like how this supports uh, these challenges so uh, this is a kind of a core operation system which uh, which can be easily expanded uh, for uh, global expansion it supports many currencies many uh, countries and it's a kind of a true cloud based systems uh, this provides access to uh, bi so this bi is built into that and it is it is built to run a business not just financial so it's more about uh, means everything is integrated as part of one application and we, we that also drives innovation you know innovation so when we see uh, means as i talked about earlier that uh, the cfos has different kind of roles so uh, they they wear many hats at different times they are uh, working as a steward as an operator as a catalyst where uh they are providing access to the different information and be becoming effective decision leader they are also acting as a strategist as and as, as a leader so let's see how uh, net should help the cfo in uh, different roles so as a steward uh, so means net should provides uh, auditing as well as compliance requirements uh, as well as the streamlined financial flows so Uh, there is a number that netsuite customers see like 40 to 70% reduction in the time for closing the books and uh, about the like the burden of maintaining an erp system so it's as this is on the cloud so there is no maintenance or burden of managing the the, the enterprise resource uh, uh, planning application as an operator they are able to leverage the latest uh, technologies as well as they are able to execute on the financial centric activities so so that is more about uh, when they are acting as an operator when they are opting as a catalyst so uh, so <clears throat> they they are able to use new business models revenue models change uh, uh, ch channel models and geographies to to get the new opportunities and as well as uh, they are able to provide financial perspective uh, on profitable uh, growth and innovation and uh, they are able to provide the financial dashboard as well as information to stakeholders to to make the the, the effective decision uh, uh, for 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 their organization and as a strategist they they can see the big picture they they can see uh, with, with the inbuilt bi like what is the current state and where they they, they want to go so they, they can do this kind of planning as well as they 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 can look forward uh, with the the change in behavior and uh, lastly about uh, empower, uh, empowering the the workforce so that is as a uh, role of uh, strategist and as a role of leader it is more about uh, like uh, this supports the growth initiative and global expansion so currently like they are working in one region and if they want to expand their business to different region they don't have to think twice 
So uh, this supports, uh, NetSuite supports like uh, uh, 190 plus currencies, uh, support localized uh, uh, languages as well as tax reporting in 50 uh, uh, locals. So it supports uh, uh, this, this kind of a growth initiative when they want to do a kind of a global uh, kind of business. And when we see uh, the design principles of NetSuite Financial, uh, so, so uh, in uh, sh uh, shortly we'll be able to see the demo of like how NetSuite Financial support uh, these use cases. So uh, it is simple. Uh, it is uh, like uh, most of the systems are like too rigid to response to changing business needs and priority, but it is uh, it is created very simple and flexible. It has uh, speed for real time data reporting because everything is happening in the real time. There is no uh, kind of batch processing which is happening. Uh, thirdly, it is collaboration at the core that is about. Uh, uh, so means we can use uh, this. This is hosted in the cloud as well as there is a mobile application as well as uh, the analytical reporting are inbuilt as uh, part of uh, this tool. And uh, as I have uh, shown that uh, this is uh, available in many languages. So uh, although uh, it is a kind of a, a global uh, uh, reach, but uh, there is also a very good localization available for uh, for for different kind of use cases in uh, terms of statutory reporting as well as in terms of languages. And it is secure, so uh, it is has security at all levels. So, uh, so the, the, the CFOs doesn't have to think about uh, uh, a losing or breach of any kind of data. So, so these are the, the financial features uh, which are part of uh, uh, for uh, part of NetSuite, and this includes uh, financial and accounting, financial planning, financial reporting. Uh, these are on-demand and real-time reporting, billing. Uh, revenue management as well as global account and consolidation where uh, like uh, there are multiple uh, organizations uh, hierarchy in place and we need to do multi currency management or multi company management. So uh, this supports uh, 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 this this kind of scenario very well. So now let's jump into uh, the demo. And in the meanwhile, like if you have any uh, kind of questions, uh, feel, uh, please feel free to put that in uh, chat window and uh, we'll be able to answer these questions uh, during the demo as well as uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. So uh, over to you, Sandeep. Thank you, Vikram. Um, let me know once the screen is visible and I'm clear. Yeah, yeah, you, you screen is visible. Fantastic. Good afternoon, all. I will be taking you through Oracle NetSuite as a product. We will be covering some of the areas that uh, Vikram talked about. We'll be primarily focusing on a job role of a CFO. So most of my content is tailored to the financial capabilities of NetSuite, but there is of course a lot more that NetSuite can do. And feel free to put in your questions in the Q&A section. We have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of this demo, wherein we will answer those queries. So what you see on the screen is a login page of NetSuite for an administrator. What you might have already figured out is NetSuite is a role based solution. And what it means is based on who you're logged in as the entire content of the dashboard will cater to that job role. Since I'm an administrator, I can see things like who has logged in into the system. What was the time frame? What was the field that they changed and what is the audit log of those and, and so on and so forth. So once I change my role to let's say a CFO, the entire job role of the CFO and the activities that the CFO wants to focus on will appear on my dashboard like this. We're going to spend a little bit of time understanding these widgets and understanding how they're going to help us or how they're going to help you. Right? Uh, so starting with this KPI, which highlights a couple of areas of my businesses which are important for me. And then I have multiple indicators over different time frames in a comparative manner. For example, I can see that my sales this year versus last year has gone down by 98%. And that's something I, I need to be worried about 
and I need to follow through. So one of the few things that I can do as an activity against it is I can open up the last year sales figures and see that how did I fare against that? I can also open up simultaneously current year sales figures in a new tab so that I can see the last year figures and I can see the current year figures and then I can clearly see where the problem exists. The problem is that I had a very large coverage in terms of my clientele. Whereas in this year, I only have one client, right? So then again, looking at this, it gives me a very quick glance of where we are faring wrong and what is it that we need to fix. As an action item from here itself, I can email this report to let's say my sales head and say that, uh, hey Frank, can you please look into this? Sending this email from here will automatically uh, shoot an attachment of this report uh, to Frank, who is my sales rep, or I could have had multiple people added onto that same email and sent to them. Now, Frank as a user doesn't have to log in into the system to see this. Since I'm sending him to him through NetSuite, NetSuite lets me select what kind of way that report will go, what kind of format it will go and who all recipients I can send it to, right? So not only are you getting the data, but you are able to act on it. Another common question that I get asked is, Sandeep, I see this 218K figure, but I want to know how did we come to that? And I can continue to drill down into it till I reach the source of that transaction, right? So what it does is it took me from that 218K figure against one customer and broke it down into all the invoices that I had against the customer. So now I know the breakup of how did we actually invoice this much to the customer. And then I can go and look at individual items, for example, invoice number 147, which had two line items. Uh, if I click on this, it will take me to the transaction invoice 147 and I can further investigate who was the salesperson, what was the date on which we sold it, what are the items we sold it, and if I want, I can then jump into the items or the customer through the hyperlinks. Right. So this serves two purposes. One is, of course, it gives you access to every data point that you have on your dashboard and the ability to drill through to the source of the transaction. So you can always validate the data. That also means that everything that you see in NetSuite at any given point in time is live data. Right? There is no day end processing. There is no batch runs. All of that that a user enters is immediately available across your dashboards and reports in real time. Another use case for the same scenario is when you have audits. A lot of NetSuite customers actually give access to their auditors. They subscribe to a two month package of their existing NetSuite. They create those login IDs only for that auditors and they tell them that, hey, look, these are our data points. Drill on anything, it will take you to the source. And when you are in the source transaction, you can also see the attachments as the supporting documents. Only come back to us if you are not able to find something in the system. Right? So that makes a lot of their jobs easier. Moving on, um, while these are some pre-configured ones, Another off question that I get often asked is Sandeep, can I add my own KPIs? Because every company is unique and you might want to track something that no other people do. Right? So there are two ways to do this. One is a standard KPI and one is a custom KPI. So standard KPIs, uh, for example, for those of you who are from a product company would want to know the cost of goods sold. Uh, I think all of us would want to know the long term liabilities of the company. And then there are a lot of other KPIs that I can add, but just let's start with these two. So these two, once I added the cogs and the long term liability, I can also set up that what time frame do I want to focus on? Say, for example, I'm looking for this fiscal year versus last fiscal year comparison. Right? And I can do the same for every single KPI that I have. I can also set up thresholds which will alert me if something goes above or below a certain threshold, right? So for example, when I see my cost of goods sold is going above my sales figures, that is a definite reason to worry. And I want the system to intelligently send me an email saying that Sandeep, in the month of March, our cost of goods sold figure 
are 90% that of the sales figures, right? It can be a percentage, it can be a value, it can be a comparative. Those kind of workflows can be set up and the system will then keep eye on those KPIs for you and will only report for exceptions. But a simpler way to achieve that is, of course, add that to your dashboard, then do the comparisons. You have the change management and as you add anything immediately, it becomes trailable as well, right? So the same COGS, uh, the same way we drill through sales, we can also do through the Cox report. It will take us to income statement from income statement. We can go ahead and keep drilling through till we reach the source. Um, another widget that we um, our customers find very useful is the reminders. We at NetSuite believe that we want to change the working culture from a task driven and task oriented to a dashboard driven and oriented. So what it means is we want our system to help you set up tasks for different people without anybody manually adding those tasks in the system. So what we do during implementations is we understand the job roles and responsibilities per role, right? And since we have been doing this for last 22 years, we already know a couple of them. So for example, we know that a CFO might be involved in a couple of approvals and they would also be involved in a couple of invoice approvals that go beyond certain threshold of value. Right? Giving those reminders to that person, make sure that when I log in into the system, I'm focusing on the tasks that I'm supposed to do. All of these are context driven, meaning that you can decide which ones appear on whose dashboard. And second, of course, they are automated, which means once the event happens, it will come and be ready for you to work on. Right? And since NetSuite is a um, cloud native platform, all of this is also available on your mobile phones. Android and iOS through an application that comes with the NetSuite platform, right? So for all of those you who are always on the go, um, you can approve these bills and expenses and invoices from a cab or from your own car or from the comfort of your home, even if you are not in the same country. Um, and then I can go on and on about, you know, different types of data points. Another one that I would like to highlight in terms of flexibility is the ability to change the content of the dashboard. So let's say I'm showing you this income by period trend. What all I can change? The first thing I can change is the time frame, saying that hey, I want to look at it from a yearly time frame. Right? Um, another thing that I can do is I can change the way the graph appears. Right? And the third thing I can do, and which is the, which is what what I really love to do, is to give the user's ability to, to compare things. So for example, I want to compare my income with my expenses because then I'll get a sense of whether we are going in the right direction or wrong direction. So what I do is I add one more KPI and now this same graph gives me a lot more information than it was giving me a couple of minutes ago. So the same graph tells me that hey, my expenses are not always in sync with my income, right? You see a trend of expenses going higher in the month of June and July. Everywhere else, it's more or less acceptable. Again, I can have this graph sent to people or I can go in my income and expense report and drill through and understand why are our expenses so high, right? So it gives you actionable insights into where the business is going wrong and it can bring all of that on your dashboard and also send you notifications and reminders to act on things that are exceptions. We all need our ratios. So maybe things like EBITDAs, maybe things like your asset versus liability ratios, all of that can be set up in these kind of dashboards, right? Um, and again, you have seen it that whatever we are missing, we give you the ability to set it up, right? So, uh, and this is where NetSuite differentiates from most of the softwares in the industry today. We do not make you dependent on us. We want us to handle the technology, whereas we want to give all the tools to better utilize the technology to your needs, right? So everything that you can think of and say that Sandeep, we do these kind of KPI measurements during the implementation, our team will help you train on that so that you can do it in-house rather than depending on others. 
All right. A uh, couple of other things that I have seen during my, you know, my years of ERP implementation engagements is it's very hard for users to move from systems like Tally and other systems to an ERP. There is a lot of work that goes in, you know, uh, change management and how we handle that is, as you might have already realized, that the UI is extremely simple. It is purpose built for different users. And more importantly, what I found painful in most of the ERPs is the ability to find where what is. For example, I want to search for the ability to create a purchase order, right? Rather than finding out, go to transactions, go to this and go to that, I can quickly use these to look at the data that I'm, I want to do. And it extends to everything, right? So I want to do journal entries. I can just type in journal entries and system pulls up every page that can be used for journal entries. May it be intercompany, may it be amortizations, may it be uh, regular journal entries, or may it be any, any other journal entries, for example, statistical series, right? Uh, when I click on this particular, and I'm opening it up in a new window, it opens the transactions with the existing status of, you know, uh, journal entries that I have. Right? If I were to look at amortization, it will ask me, take me to the page where I create amortization journal entries. So rather than having to navigate through the menus and submenus and trying to recollect where what is, this is a use a very simple feature. We we call it the Google of NetSuite. Another use case for the same feature is when you are on a call with somebody and, and then you know the client is telling them you're telling you about a certain invoice that was paid or not paid they want to check the delivery order status or they want to check the project status at that point in time rather than having to remember the document numbers and the client numbers and names you can just type in whatever you remember and again system anything that the system has against them will be pulled out in here if i open the client screen it will give me all the details that I want against that particular client. Right. And I, I use this feature most often. I find it very convenient to use this rather than the traditional menus and submenus. Right. Now let's talk about the, the most important part, right? the ability to do segregations, how you set up the chart of accounts in NetSuite. Right. And I'm going to take a step back and we are going to start with our ability to do, uh, you know, uh, multiple legal entities, multiple countries and consolidations and um, eliminations, and then we are going to go into the accounting structure and the segmenting strategy. So some of you might have branches which are uh, across the uh, across the globe, uh, or intercompany or or uh, subsidiaries across the globe, right? And NetSuite gives you the flexibility to not only put it in a diagrammatic manner into the system, but each of these boxes represents a country currency combination and a reporting structure, right? So creating this, make sure that system understands that any entry that goes in this box will be saved in an Indian based currency. Any entry that goes in Australian box will have an Australian dollar currency and everything that goes in these boxes will be consolidated at this level in let's say US dollars or INR or SGD or whichever is your consolidation currency. Another thing that the system does is it helps you create an elimination entity at each level. So right now I have a one level diagram. If you had a four or five level diagram saying that my Singapore and India and Mauritius consolidate into an Asian kind of region and then, then I have a regional group and then the regional group reports to my parent group. If you were to create such hierarchy, the elimination entity will be present at all the two levels so that whenever there are intercompany transactions at either levels, system automatically routes them through intercompany eliminations and you have the a lot of pain saved from doing those elimination entries manually at the end of the year. OK, so this is the first part of setting up your org structure. We replicate all the entities that you have. We replicate how they are in terms of reporting hierarchy or consolidation hierarchy, and we help you set up eliminations against that. 
the common question that I get around this is that Sandeep, I have an India entity. Let's say I report into USD, but I also want to have, let's say, a report in INR at this level, at a consolidation level, right? And that's something that I see more often and often, especially considering that you have um, uh, FDI or different kinds of multinational companies involved. In all that scenario, we do have a feature that helps you uh, have more than one currency for reporting, right? So it also helps you in setting up, for example, if you have IFRS books in one country and US gaps in another and India's in another one, um, you do entry only once, but the system takes care of pushing it to the different accounting standards. And same goes for your different fiscal calendars as well. Now moving on to how we set up the chart of accounts, right? So once is the subsidiary structure that we saw. The second is different general ledger segments. And I'll tell you how they matter, how they are important, how they help you uh, segregating your chart of account from your um, from your uh, cost centers, profit centers and all of that, right? Uh, so let's say I have an expense account. Uh, yeah, I have credit card expenses and I have, let's say, the phone related expenses. Um, yeah, any kind of accounts that I have uh, will only have those four digits with them, right? So it will not have uh, the entire string of subsidiary, another string for your, let's say, departments, another string for your locations, and another string for your, let's say, revenue streams, or you might have projects, or you might have product lines, or you might have regions, and so on and so forth. What we do is we separate these um, segments from your chart of accounts. So your chart account might look like just a 400, and let me pull up uh, the place where we can see an impact of this income statement. Now you can see that I have a 4,000 as a revenue account and I have 4010 as a sales account. What I would do in a traditional system is I would add one more string as 10 for location one, another string as 20, you know, 200 for department, another string of 300 or 1,000 for revenue streams and so on. So what that results in is a very lengthy chart of account. It also results in me ha having to manually keep gaps in my chart of account and make sure that all my subsidiaries are following the same gaps and make sure that every time I open a new location, a revenue stream, a product line, I have to redo my chart of accounts to add maybe 500 accounts more just to accommodate one change. All of that goes away because we have separate departments, locations, revenue streams that you can create by your own it could have a hierarchy of its own, right? So in here I have created a hierarchy that there's business process services, under which there is CX and this one, under this there is this one, and under that there are multiple child, right? Now, what I'm referring to right now is a services type of operation. Same way you could have a products type of operation where you say that I manufacture five types of products, each product line becomes here, the sub product lines come in here, and then the item master contains the actual products that I'm selling. Um, another benefit that I have seen of this approach is that there is no limitation on the depth of how much you want to do, the levels that how much you want to do, as well as the number of segments that you want to do. Right. So you might say some deep department location revenue streams are a very common one. We have five more segments that we want to track our PNL basis on. You can go ahead and create your own segments. You can go ahead and map them, those to transactions and masters. And then you can also pull them in your PNL sales purchases reports. All of that control is given to you. If I were to sit with you for five minutes, I can challenge you each and every one of you can do that in NetSuite today. And that is the kind of power a true cloud platform brings to our customers. So what I've pulled up in here is the same income statement with my revenue streams so that I don't have to create multiple sales account based on my revenue streams. Those are in here. The hierarchy is in here. The hierarchy wise totals are in here and the account wise totals are here. 
and the same works not only for my revenue streams, but my departments, my locations, and most importantly, my subsidiary structure. Right. So the structure that we saw on our uh, landing page or dashboard a while ago is same structure that is applicated in here. Right. So I can in a single click, I can see the sales amount uh, for uh, untagged entities for Australia, for Canada, for UK, US, and, and all my including my elimination entities, which will have a separate column. Right. This makes my job much easier to know where what money is. And again, everything in here you see is clickable. I click on that, it will take me to the root transaction. So everything has a ready made audit trail. And if this does not suffice, as I said, you can have additional segments created of your own. Uh, I created a client, you could create projects, you could create product lines, and there is no limitation on that. Some organizations say that Sandeep, I want to do my p and to the most granular level. I want to do it based on items. Right? As long as you are able to do the data entry that way, we are, we are there to support you for that. Uh, any reports in NetSuite can be easily exported into spreadsheets and those spreadsheets do something amazing that I have seen very few systems do. They preserve the formula, right? So I have seen a lot of uh, finance folks break their heads because this exported data doesn't have formulae, spend a lot of time adding those formulae because if they don't add the formula, if I add a row here or I do something else on top of it, the data will not automatically update. Right? So this becomes a very helpful feature. Another question that I get often is, Sandeep, can I just customize this, right? Customize any reports in NetSuite? And the answer is absolutely yes. Right. So let's say we are in an income statement report. I go ahead and click on add, edit and let's say I add a budget amount. Right. So I just name it budget. The existing one I name it as actual. And then I go ahead and add a formula field that says variance. Right. Of course, there is a budget versus actual report in NetSuite. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is the ability that we can do this yourself, right? You can do this yourself. You don't need technological skills. You don't need coding language knowledge. You can do that yourself very easily, right? Actual budget variance. Uh, so since the budget is zero, all the amount is in variance. When you define the budget, the amount will start showing up. But this is something you can do yourself. Name it, give it to specific users, and they'll start working on it. Another quick feature is that all these reports can be scheduled to be run at a specific time and sent to more than one people within or outside your organization. Right? So you have your managing directors, you have your uh, investors, whoever you want to send, and just not just income statement, all the 200 plus reports that we have in NetSuite. Okay. Um, since we are a bit low on time, I'll quickly fast forward through a couple of topics that we have lined up. Um, but to put in your questions so we can visit them back in the question and answer session. Once you have your initial allocations done, what happens next is you have those common expenses that you need to allocate, right? And while I think every system provides a way to fixed allocate, saying that whatever you have, uh, define which department, what weight you want to apportion, and they will just split those expenses. For example, you have uh, rent expense. And you might say that hey, I, I know that these departments consume this much of square footage, so just apportion them based on the weight that I define. But in some cases, you want the distribution to be done dynamically, let's say based on a head count. Right? In that case, I want healthcare insurance to be split based on a head count balance at the end of every period. What I'll do is I'll maintain the head count in a system using a simple import every month based on the data that I get from my HR system. That will help map that in administration department, we have a headcount of eight, and hence the total, out of the total headcount, 53% should go to administration department in terms of healthcare insurance, right? And this is just headcount that I have used. You can go square footage, you can do revenue percentage, and so on and so forth. So this becomes a very easy task once you set it up, system will help you run this journal entry automatically at the end of every month. 
and the second activity that you do is your amortizations, prepaid expenses. So again, you set up which method you want to use. Is it straight line or is there more more type of methods? And then you associate that with your invoice and the system starts doing the amortization. It also shows you what is pending, what has been processed and what is the schedule on which it's going to process the rest. Right? All of that data is available at your fingertip. And again, we can utilize them in your reminders at the uh, home screen. Um, a lot of organizations were you know, using simple accounting systems. Um, struggle with this. What they struggle with is the time it takes for them to close the books. A lot of that actually comes from their inability to um, get automated journal entries happening basis the transactions. Right. So what NetSuite does differently is when you punch in a goods receipt or when you punch in a sales invoice, the system automatically passes on the journal impact of that entry real time across your subsidiaries. Right. So you don't need to do any batch end runs, day end runs, or you need not to prompt anybody to do that entry. It happens real time. So one part is sorted there. The second part is your ability to close the books by making sure all the checklist items are done. And this is where NetSuite helps you in establishing those checklists. Right? What you see in here are not just diagrams, but they are actionable buttons. Right? I click on that and that's when the button lets me go ahead and close the periods and submit it. Till I do that, it will not allow me to do the next task. Right, so this is ensuring that not only have you covered all the tasks, you are also covering the sequence of the task, right? And then you, the system goes identifying each of them are closed, then your period close. And anything that you want to note, you can go ahead and create a note, add it there, so that the next time somebody comes and sees, they will have the reference of what did happen, what did we do. So this, along with the ability to automatically pass transactions, allocations, amortizations and your intercompany eliminations has reduced more than 50% of time that you have most companies spent on period closures. For those companies who do uh, foreign country transactions, right? NetSuite does help you in doing realize and unrealized gain calculations automatically. So uh, we do have a tie up with Zignite. We pull up the exchange rates every night from there. You can use that. You can also ask us to connect with something else uh, or you can manually import the exchange rates into the system or type it in. Uh, once you have done that, um, as a part of your period and procedures, you would be calculating the unrealized exchange gain or loss. Realized once, some system automatically passes as and when the payment happens or the application happens. Okay. And all of these reports give you uh, vendor wise, uh, subsidiary wise, source transaction details wise and uh, end transaction detail wise gain loss details. Right? So you don't need to manually figure out whether it was right or not. Once you set up everything, system will take care of it. Uh, cash flows is another area that a lot of businesses struggle and we, we all know that it's uh, a company might be doing phenomenally well on your PNL, but if the cash flow is not done well, the company has serious challenges and troubles. We do indirect cash flow statements. During implementations, we also set up uh, help set up direct cash flow statements for those companies who need it. Um, and of course, from the House of Oracle, there are a lot of tools that go into the area of planning and budgeting, what if analysis like OPEX planning, CAPEX planning, manpower planning and so on and so forth, uh, which is probably a topic for another session and another day. Uh, lastly, I would quickly like to show the analytics feature and this is something uh, again makes you self-sufficient. What we have seen during my implementation days is that everything look used to look fantastic in the demo systems and once you implement and you go back um, and let's say I forgot to mention a report that I needed and now you have to go back to either the partner or the OEM saying that hey I want this report. Usually that would cost you at least one and a half weeks of time and probably same amount of money in lack, lacks of rupees. What NetSuite does differently is not only it gives you the ability to create reports yourselves, 
it also gives you the ability to create uh, dashboards yourself and let's see an example of how that works right? so let's say i go into sales invoices um, as a data set point uh, what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create a dashboard for sales that we have invoiced on the left hand side i have my selected columns i can drill down and look at multiple columns and on the right hand side i have been asked which form do you like so let's say i like pivot and i'm gonna say i want the customer to be here i want the amount to be here right and then let's say i want the item to be here so the pivot that i'm creating is which customer what product and how much value did we sell it to right? i have the result in here uh, and, and now with this result, what I can do is I can save it and say this is Sandeep. I can give it a name that I prefer. Once I save this particular report, if you remember the dashboard that we were looking at uh, and this personalized widget gives me ability to add anything that is missing. I'm going to add an analytics portal on top of this and I'm going to set select the workbook that we just created in that right um, so i'm gonna search for sandeep webinar the one we just created and i'm adding that to my dashboard right so of course this can be extended to multiple users within your organization and for multiple job roles but this gives a unique ability to you and your users to have access to the data in the format that they can easily consume rather than those boring reports.